Hello and welcome to another episode on Maritime Radar. The Environment, Social and Governance ESG reporting is aimed at addressing the disclosure needs or requirements of several stakeholders in the maritime industry, which covers legal requirements in various jurisdictions and the expectations of the wider society. ESG also ensures that relevant data is compiled timely in line with standards relevant to the sector and industry. Repositioning Nigeria's maritime industry towards the path of economic growth and sustainability are some of the issues that will be on the front burner on today's show. I'm Norma Obiaso. ESG is the active and corporate involvement and establishment of strategies and corporate practices that focus on environment, social and governance issues. Disclosure of data relevant to the environmental impact from shipping company operations and their commercial fleets constitutes an ever-growing trend. Therefore, ESG reporting remains critical in the shipping sector to provide confidence to the investors and other relevant stakeholders, including the community. But before we get further into today's lineup on the program, let's find out the latest in Maritime News. Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria has warned that it would not tolerate any form of anti-workers policy or any form of intimidation and harassment at the Lekki Free Seaport Terminal, LFT. Speaking during the inauguration of executives of the LFT district and three unit officers at the Lekki Seaport in Lagos, the union's president general, Adewale Adinyonju, reacted to the reports of intimidation at the terminal and noted that the union's primary assignment is to protect workers and ensure their welfare. He stressed that intimidation, humiliation, harassment and any form of anti-workers policy of slavery will not be tolerated. Congratulating the new members and the newly inaugurated executives, he urged them to be disciplined and proactive and he also warned workers to desist from any form of drug trafficking breaching or pilfering of containers at the ports. The primary objective of any union leader is to protect the welfare of their work, of their members, and that is the stand of uh, Maritime Workers of Nigeria and the senior staff. You can see the senior staff uh, present beside me here. So it's to tell you the union have come to stay, both the junior and the senior have come to stay. And uh, I said it, that they be expecting what we call a collective bar bar bargaining agreement between the employer and employers, including the union, anytime from now. The Secretary of the Senior Staff Association of Statutory Corporation and Government-Owned Companies, Maritime Branch, Akin Bodunde, said that his union would work with MWUN to develop the organization. The great privilege and opportunity given to us who come here and uh, unionize our members to at least to work in conjunction with them to see how we can develop the, the port. And uh, it's not an easy thing, but we thank God for the grace and we thank the PG who started the move and we have to support him and we are here also to do the same. The United States, United Kingdom, Denmark and other countries have called for more action, including increased surveillance over the booming practice of unregulated oil transfers at sea as fears grow over potential pollution. A paper submitted to the United Nations claims that these transfers undermine the rules-based international order and increase the risk of pollution to nearby coastal states, threatening global efforts to prevent pollution from ships. The paper was submitted to United Nations Shipping Agency, the International Maritime Organization, by the member states ahead of a major Marine Environment Protection Committee session in July. It was also backed by Australia, Canada, Spain and Ukraine. Hundreds of ghost tankers, which are not fully regulated, have joined this opaque parallel trade over the past few years, carrying oil from countries hit by Western sanctions and restrictions, including Russia and Iran. Tactics used by such ships include switching off tracking transponders, faking locations, and also conducting ship-to-ship -ship operations at locations outside of authorized transfer zones, and sometimes in poor weather to conceal activities.
Africa needs its own storytellers, people who understand the continent because they're from it. People who know that news is more than just a conversation starter, it's our stories. Because these stories run deeper than headlines and segments. It's about digging deeper to get the facts and telling the human side of every single story, not just the echoes from foreign headlines and perspectives. It's time to take back our narratives and share them in our voices. The birth of Africa's new age reporting, and this is where it begins, right here at New Central TV, the stories that put Africa first. If you are just joining us, this is Maritime Radar, with the shipping industry accounting for almost 3% of global greenhouse gas emissions annually. It is only natural that ESG would come knocking. Joining us now to discuss this is Dr. Kasole Wasonga. He is the Assistant Director, Maritime Risk and Governance in Kenya. Stay with us. Hello, Dr. Kasole Wasonga. It's good to have you on the show. Good morning. I'm also privileged to attend this and uh, be interviewed on the matters of ESG. It's a privilege. Let's get right into it. Um, let's get the understanding or the foundational understanding of what ESG means. Now, ESG is the environmental, social and governance. Uh, reporting it's a new a new terminology uh, which is now being brought uh, to allow the organizations or companies to provide more details to the stakeholders in regard to issues do with the environmental impact social impact and the governance impact within those institutions so this one cuts across all the industries but specifically today we'll be able to talk about uh, the maritime sector, how ESG reporting is shaping. The, the, the disruption caused by the COVID-19 COVID pandemic brought with it a shift in the maritime industry is starting to focus not only on the environmental but also on social and governance. Tell us more about this. Yes, the impact of uh, COVID is real and uh, it really imp impacted on the shipping industry and the maritime sector as a whole. And uh, a lot of issues uh, that focuses on the environmental, social and governance issues uh, came into place. Now, initially, majority of were focusing on uh, environmental issues, talking about uh, greenhouse, uh, greenhouse emissions, talking about waste and water management within the, ship, the ships, talking about the ecological issues as brought about by the marine pollution. But then we are on the social aspect, we are trying to look at the issues of labor, human rights in terms of labor workforce. And then we are also uh, trying to look at, uh, we are trying to look at uh, issues to do with the diversity in terms of the employment, so that uh, the shipping industry, the, uh, the maritime sector can be able to embrace various categories of individuals within the sector. So that is how far uh, the COVID has impacted, but when you, in terms of uh, even the workforce, a lot of things have changed. The reporting requirements uh, by different regulatory agencies have also increased, and this one automatically has also impacted uh, in terms of uh, the cost uh, of the service providers within the maritime sector, and also to also to enhance the working environment for the uh, for the labour workforce, the people who are being employed in this sector. You, you, you mentioned the workforce, so take us through the implications of, of uh, the ESG on the workforce. When you are talking about the workforce, we are trying to look at the welfare of the, of the employees. Now the welfare of the employees is very important for the purpose of running, uh, providing services within the maritime sector. So when you are trying to look at issues with labor rights, you are trying to look at uh, the policies 
regarding the freedom of organization, collective bargaining agreements, the working hours within the uh, within the ships, for example, and other service providers within the uh, provi providers within the maritime industry. We are talking about issues to do with the state port state control in terms of looking at the number of deficiencies uh, within the ships because they normally do inspection for any ships like in Kenya, any ships docking within our ports, they are subject to uh, inspection, which is mandatory. So if the deficiency are uh, minimal, the chances of the ships being detained is, is very zero. But when the deficiencies, especially touching on the issues of health, human and other mechanical problems, you'll realize that the ship might be detained. But the moment it is detained within the port, then it increases the cost to the ship owners. So, so then uh, again, on the same same line, on the same same line, uh, we are also trying to look at uh, issues do with marine ca casualties. And then now in this case, we are trying to look at uh, the how the environment within the shipping lines, the ships have improved so that we minimize uh, the casualties in case of uh, incidents within within the within the ship in in, in case there's a in the process of voyage so there's a lot of uh, enhancement in terms of safety a lot of inspection and uh, like in our country we do a lot of uh, regulation in that area and our focus is on that then uh, still on the workforce you know, these um, uh, changes, is, uh, we also need training. So what have you done, especially the Kenyan government, done uh, uh, as regards uh, training the workforce? Now, the training of the workforce, currently we have trained a lot. We have uh, trained the workforce in terms of the hospitality industry. A lot of them have been uh, trained. And uh, what is currently uh, we are currently doing is that uh, we we train, we, uh, we partner with the training institutions, both within the hospitality industry. We also train uh, with the universities and technical uh, TVETs. But again, after, doing, after getting those uh, hospitality courses, then we take them now to the mandatory courses for the uh, for required within the maritime sector, like the STCW, we also give them chances of rating for them to uh, to be employed within the ships, and that one has really changed. It. We have witnessed a paradigm shift, even in terms of the uptake of our workforce to the shipping lines. The demand has go has been very very high since uh, COVID. You you um, you've mentioned the application of uh, the ESG to the shipping industry. Can you share with us its challenges? the challenges so far you've experienced now, with the challenges that we have okay. there's a lot of disclosure requirements a lot of disclosure requirements from the regulators okay. and uh, those disclosure requirements come at a cost to the service providers within the maritime sector so for example you are we are, we are being told that uh, the ships must provide details in terms of the accident uh, safety and labor rights uh, to the regulators, and uh, we are trying to look at issues of the lost time during that time. Uh, when you look at uh, even the workforce within the shipping line, uh, this one has been uh, dominated by men in most cases. But at least we have seen cases on where now women are taking up some of these uh, these uh, these positions. So the challenge that that. That's the, the, the discrimination aspect in terms of uh, the gender has been a very big challenge. But what we have done uh, currently in our country, we have made sure that uh, even the employment that is being, uh, is being run, the recruitment of staff, we must make sure that we have a, a balance with the agreement in terms of the balance of the staff being taken, the gender, the, the women and the men. So the diversity issue is still big, a big challenge. How have you how have you fared? How have you fared with that uh, discrimination you mentioned? Addressing the discrimination. Now, how we have addressed the discrimination is to have an agreement with the recruitment agencies. 
when they are coming to do uh, recruitment, we give them, uh, they give us an opportunity to balance the recruitment of both men and women. Okay. So there must be some balance. That one has at, at least has reduced that issue of discrimination in terms of uh, taking these opportunities. No, so we'll be looking at the trends shaping the ESG landscape in Kenya, but that will be after this short break. Please stay with us. New Central TV, Africa's number one storyteller, has come with the best of both worlds. With a combination of news app and live TV, we ensure that you keep track of the latest headlines, breaking news, and in-depth analysis from professional journalists from around the continent. Download the New Central TV app on Android and iOS and get started today. Don't forget to follow us on New Central's social media platforms. New Central. Africa first. If you are just joining us, this is Maritime Radio and I still have with me Dr. Kasoli Wasonga. Before we went on that break, uh, we were looking at um, the gender discrimination um, in this e maritime industry? Yes, uh, we were trying to look at uh, the, the gender disparity in terms of the diversity as one of the parameters being used in the ESG reporting. So we have, uh, have uh, just enumerated a few things that we are doing in Kenya and uh, which we are now seeing that uh, we are achieving some, uh, some of the objectives that we are putting in place. But then we are also, be able, we are also be able focusing on uh, the age group and also the minority. The minority and the special groups are also, also being taken care of. So there are uh, a lot of things that we have put in place in terms of uh, uh, policies when we are considering those who are uh, being employed or recruited to work in uh, the, the maritime sector, specifically in the shipping industry, and uh, more so to the cruise ships and uh, cargo ships and so on. So we, we have really taken that one seriously so that we give equal opportunities to everybody within the sector. So, so, so still, still in Kenya, uh, share with us the trends that is shaping the ESG landscape in the maritime industry in Kenya. Now, in the maritime industry, it has not picked up uh, so much because, uh, you know, this is a new, a new area of focus. And uh, if you can recall very well that uh, in terms of uh, the industry, we have not given uh, guidelines on some, some of the mandatory requirements. But when we look at our sister regular, uh, age, uh, sectors like the insurance industry, we have looked at the capital markets, we have looked at the central bank, they have been able to come up with the mandatory uh, requirements for the disclosures in regard to ESG. So in the maritime sector, we are still not, we are still not there. We are yet to come up with the guidelines. So, so what is the implications of this? Not being able to come up with. Now, the implication of this is uh, the implication is huge because uh, when you look at uh, when you look at the European, the European, the EU, they have adopted some of the ESG guidelines, which has now become mandatory to them, and uh, all companies operating within the EU are expected to comply with some of these uh, standards. And uh, what has also been done, with, when you look at the financial reporting uh, sector, where currently the, uh, uh, currently the International Standards, Accounting Standards Board, uh, recently, sometimes last year, they came up with the standards, which are now in the consideration phase, which now, now will be, uh, will be published for every company to adopt. Now, at that point, when uh, the local companies have not been able to put in some of the, to meet the requirements in terms of ESG, it will be a, a bit of a, a challenge in terms of the implementation. Cost will increase. And therefore, also in terms of the workforce expertise within that area will also be a challenge because of the demand that will be there. Okay, so yes. talking about the 
E in the ESG, which is the environment. The, uh, uh, yes. The ESG strategy, decarbonization becomes prominent. So can you shed more light on that? Decarbonization is becoming very prominent because we are trying to look at uh, the gas emissions. And uh, you realize that uh, most, uh, most uh, shipping companies, the most ships have been using uh, uh, engines, which are, uh, 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 how do we call it, the fuel-driven engines, the fossil fuel. But uh, of late, the, the, uh, what I've seen, uh, getting the information from our trainees and some of our workforce who, who train in these ships, uh, a majority of ships are doing upgrading in terms of their engine types to minimize the uh, carbon emissions uh, to the what? To the environment. So their engines are now being turned to, uh, to be environmentally friendly. And that one is also helping now the, the shipping companies to improve on the areas of uh, ecological, uh, in, terms of, uh, in, in, in terms of the green gas emissions. And again, one of the key things also, when you look at the econo ecological uh, impact, the issue of uh, of uh, ballast, the, the, the waste management within the port of uh, destination. There's a lot of things that have been done to make sure that uh, the disposal by the ships is only done when all the affluent has been fully treated so that they become very much harmless to the marine environment. So those are some of the things that are currently being undertaken in that area. You've been able to uh, give us a very good understanding of what this ESG is all about, uh, the implications, the challenges, and, um, uh, and the case study of um, uh, Kenya. Then let's look at the importance, the importance of ESG in the 21st century maritime industry. You know, with the issues of disclosure, the stakeholders involved, the communities involved, will be very very ben uh, will benefit a lot from these disclosures so you'll find that majority of the companies will not hide a lot of information like uh, when you look at uh, issues do with the environmental impact the disposal of uh, of waste in the water now with a full disclosure of this information so many other players within the industry will not be able to associate with the companies that are not compliant with ESG uh, requirement. So the more the compliance rate is high, the more the companies will be accepted within the environment, within by the stakeholders, and even uh, even financing institutions will not be in a position to finance those companies that they know very well impact negatively on the environment. And uh, that is what you have seen. Uh, I think majority of uh, financing companies they focus so much on uh, the companies that are promoting green green economy companies that are compliant with the ESG requirement, companies with very transparent and open policies in terms of handling the welfare of the employees, uh, compliance with the government requirement, regulators in different areas, and uh, companies uh, which are maintaining the issues of business ethics. So it, it, is a, it, it's a very, it has a huge implication for those who are not uh, planning to, uh, to, uh, to comply. Yes, when you look at it together with the, uh, the SDG requirements, some of the SDG requirements in terms of sustainability. So all those ones has a lot of implication for the companies who are not ready to comply with that. I must thank you most kindly for your time on the show. You've really thrown more light and given us understanding of what ESG is and the implications, the challenges, and what the Kenyan government is doing to ensure compliance. I must thank you most kindly for your time on the show. It's been Dr. Kasole Wasonga. He is the Assistant Director, Maritime Risk and Governance. Many thanks for your time on the show. Africa needs its own storytellers, people who understand the continent because they are from it. People who know that news is more than just a conversation starter, it's our stories. Because these stories run deeper than headlines and segments. It's about digging deeper to get the facts and telling the human side of every single story. Not just the echoes from foreign headlines and perspectives. 
it's time to take back our narratives and share them in our voices. The birth of Africa's new age reporting, and this is where it begins, right here at New Central TV, the stories that put Africa first. And that's where we draw the curtain on this week's edition. I hope you enjoyed it. I did learn a lot about the ESG in Kenya. Every week, join us on Maritime Radar as we explore factors that will ensure the development of the maritime sector in Africa. You can also expect the latest in local and global maritime news. Industry insights right here. I'm Norma Obiaswalo. Many thanks for your time. Mm -hmm.